Did you sleep well? Arlene asked, winking. Not bad, I said. I think it's the first night I didn't dream about monsters. The sun was up, the sky was clear, and for a moment it was possible to believe that none of this had ever happened. A dog ran by, a healthy mutt that someone was feeding. Not a sign of impending starvation, but perhaps an overgenerous use of resources. Guess what? She said with an impish smile. I didn't dream about monsters either, but I did dream. Teasing was simply not Arlene's style. She really surprised me. Maybe that's why they segregate the boys and the girls, I said, to make everyone think about it. We can't keep any secrets from you, said Albert, joining us outside the main cafeteria. Except the ones that count, I replied, not altogether innocently. I was still thinking about secrets and closed doors and an unknown upcoming mission. Where's Jill? asked Arlene. Already inside having breakfast, he said. We should join her. Afterward, we'll receive our briefing. It had been a long, long time since I'd eaten pancakes, with real maple syrup yet. I didn't think I'd be able to get coffee in Salt Lake City, but there was plenty of it for those with the morning caffeine monkey on their back. This was a pretty trivial monster in the grand scheme of things. And then, we got down to business. We returned to the ops room from the day before. The president was waiting for us dressed in a conservative black suit. He could have passed as an undertaker, not the most inspiring image to send us off to California. The entire state of California is in enemy hands, he said, then led us over to a map of the relevant states. Red lines marked all the existing train tracks. There used to be a high-speed train between L.A. and Salt Lake City. We destroyed the train to prevent the aliens from sending us a cargo of themselves. I refuse to refer to those creatures as soldiers. We also thought the train might be used to send us an atomic bomb. Would they even know how to use the trains? Asked Arlene. You fought them, didn't you? They can use anything we can. Machinery is machinery. It offends me how they used our own God-given atomic weapons against us. We are fortunate the radiation and poisons have not contaminated this area. God has intervened. Atomic, not nuclear. An interesting word choice. We'll be going into radiation? Asked Jill. She had not thought of this until now. You'll be entering undestroyed areas and our scientists tell us that the invaders have neutralized much of the fallout in the areas they control. Arlene interrupted as usual. When we fought them on Phobos and Deimos, they were comfortable with higher radiation levels than the human being. But that doesn't mean they could survive H-bomb fallout. For a moment, I thought the president was going to bite her head off, but then he controlled his temper. We have anti-radiation pills for you to take and wristbands that will glow red if you get a near-lethal dose. In addition, you'll have some protective gear if you require it. And any weapons you can bear, of course. How do we get to LA? I asked. Take the train answered Albert. Great, how do we get to the tracks? I thought they were all ripped up. Not all the track was destroyed, said the president. You can take one of our Humvees south, following the railroad track, to a good spot for getting aboard the train. Getting aboard. How easily he breezed over that slight difficulty. And another small difficulty. Uh, the aliens are going to let us drive right out in a Humvee. 
Albert snorted. The president glowered at him, then returned to the question. Of course not. You'll leave here and pass underneath enemy lines. The Humvee is hidden in a safe location. Albert knows where it is. I do. Where are you hid after blowing the tracks three weeks ago? Oh. Albert nodded, remembering the spot. Well, that made one of us. Underneath the aliens, I asked. You have a tunnel? It's always wise to build in a way to expedite escape, said Albert. All our safe houses use them, including this facility. Usually exit from a basement, dive down 30 or 40 feet, then continue a long way, miles perhaps. How did you build all that without anyone knowing? <laughs> we had a lot of time on our hands. He grinned and a lot of members in street maintenance positions. You must ride the train into Phoenix, continued the president, producing a pointer and stabbing Phoenix. Why Phoenix? asked Arlene. The train that goes from Phoenix into LA can't be stopped and can't be boarded. Phoenix is under demonic possession. If you stow away before Phoenix and escape detection, you might not be boarded. Then it's smooth riding all the way into L.A. He put down the pointer with a flourish. Jill laughed. She sounded a lot older than she was, listening to the scorn in her laugh. It suggested a lifetime of frustration. And the president did not act as defensive as I would have expected. I know it's a long shot, he said. I'm open to any better suggestions. I wish I had one, said Albert. I expected Jill to launch into a tirade, but instead she kept her mouth taped. The plan sounds workable to me, I said. Everything is a long shot from now on. At no point had anyone talked about who would lead this mission. I suspected the president would want his own man in charge, and I prepared myself for an argument. Then, Albert surprised me. Corporal Taggart is in charge, of course. He surprised the president, too, who started to object then bit off whatever he'd been about to say. Leadership was clearly already determined. The president allowed us to pick our own weapons, a double-barreled scatter gun for me and a 41 caliber hunting rifle with a scope for long-range work. Arlene was back to her perennial AB-10 machine pistol and a scoped 30-30. Albert surprised me by picking some foreign-made Uzi clone I'd never seen before. I didn't think a Marine would go in for that kind of flash. But I guess it wasn't really different from Arlene's AB-10, though a bit bigger. And even that might give it more stability in a firefight. Albert said he would just use Arlene's 3030 for any sniping, and Jill already had her AR-19, of course. We also took pistols, ammo, grenades, day-to-night goggles. We had to be careful to conserve the battery power, using them only when absolutely necessary. No recharges, and one of the more exotic energy weapons I never liked. Not a BFG, which they'd never heard of but a gas plasma pulse rifle. We packed food and blankets and other useful items, including a complement of mountaineering or wall scaling equipment, knotted rope, a grappling hook, crampons and pitons, the usual, usual. The Humvee waited. God and Albert knew where. Would we find it? Would it run if we did? I tried not to think about such questions as, with great solemnity, the president of the Twelve led us through the inner compound to a small, cinder-blocked building and to the escape tunnel.